from Heart and Soul in Sutter Creek. Thanks for joining me. Um, this afternoon we are going to be painting a water can filled with hydrangeas. Um, it's this one here. We did this project last week for a fundraising um, for the Amador Stars, which is a local cancer transportation company. Um, wanted to make sure that if you didn't get a chance to make it to the event that you had the opportunity to come back here and um, follow along. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, give you a little rundown of the colors I'm using and then we're just gonna dive right in. So hit rewind or fast forward, uh, pause if you need to get something, um, all from the comfort of your own home. So I hope you're all staying sane and safe. Um, I'm gonna try to do this once a week with a new project. If you wanna pick up all the supplies from me at my shop at 42 Main Street in Sutter Creek, you totally can, or you can improvise and just use what you have around your house. Uh, you can give me a call. I'll post all of the information um, to this video link on how to get a hold of me. So um, really basic colors here, just kind of a wide variety. You don't have to use these colors, just you know, make this your own project and um, kind of just jump in with whatever you want. Um, whatever you have on hand, I'm sure it'll look beautiful. Um, I've got a buttercream, I've got a turquoise blue, just a bright white. Um, here, here, right here is a periwinkle, a dark blue, a leafy green, a lilac, and a dark purple. I'm sure they all have really cool names, but that's the gist of it. So whatever brand you use, um, they'll have their own version. Um, I like just a basic um, deco art Americana paint. Um, this is the titanium white. Um, there's also the Apple Barrel brand from Walmart. Or Delta, this one's from Joann's. For brushes, on the background, I'm just gonna use this one inch chip brush. You can use whatever you have. Um, and then I'm just gonna alternate between these three brushes. This is kind of a detail liner brush. This is a filbert and this is a round. Um, again, just use what you have. These aren't very expensive if you do wanna go out and buy yourself a set or I have some here at the shop. Um, I pre-sketched this water can onto the canvas um, I will have a link to a little PDF that you can print at home and then just cut with scissors and, and lay it out. Or if you're feeling really brave, you can just kind of sketch this on yourself um, or turn it into a mason jar or um, whatever you're so inspired to do. It could just be a vase. Um, so for today, it's going to be the water can. And this one was the first one I did, so it's got a lot of, a lot of drama to it. Um, I spent a lot more time than we'll spend today, but um, you can go back and add all your details. So to get started, I'm gonna use this chip brush. You could just use a styrofoam plate if that's what you have at home. Um, but I, you know, I just wanted to um, look professional here, so I'm using the little palette. So I'm taking the chip brush and I'm dipping it into the little vanilla cream color and I'm also using this turquoise. I'm just gonna come in and kind of use a real cross hatch pattern all the way around. And I'm just gonna get really close to this water can Definitely can be pretty heavy handed with this. I'm not really big on adding a ton of water to this paint because I like it to dry and blend the layers in. Um, so I will rarely even clean my brush. I kind of like the, the surprise of what you get when you just keep picking up colors. I'm not like a super um, professional trained artist by any means. I just kind of go with what feels good and um, feel like I'm able to kind of teach other people who don't have um, you know real professional trained backgrounds just because I know how to get, get it done, I guess. <laughs>
So usually when we paint and do the sip and paint classes, um, we, you know, we probably have about you know 12 ladies in our classes. But sometimes, um, you know, we've gotten as big as like 45 to 50 class, 50 people in the class, and um, that's always fun. So having a one-on-one -on -one paint session like this, just with myself, is totally different. But um, since everybody's home and cuddling and having family time, I just I just thought I'd give you something to think about other than um, whatever it is that's going on in your house. So this will be a really fun thing to do with your kids if you want to get a couple of different canvases or even if you just have some art paper, you can sketch this out and, and you know paint it on just a little um, watercolor paper or you know some sort of mixed media tablet. we all have hordes of craft supplies that we can dip into. See all that? Let me know in the comments if there's something that I'm missing here that you'd like to see more of or if you can't quite hear, I'll try to work on that for my next um, taping. For some reason my live internet feed wasn't quite coming through so I pre-recorded this and hopefully you're watching it when you have time to really work or get crafty. So I just keep picking up a little bit of the white and a little bit of the turquoise and some of that little buttercream. Swiping it across and then dragging the paint. So you do that top layer, you can also swipe some across the bottom here where your tabletop surface is gonna be and um, we'll just keep adding to that as we go. to do is fill in our water bucket. I'm going to pick up a little bit of white and a tiny little bit of black on my palette here. A little black and white to make some gray. And I'm just going to outline my water can, the pencil lines that are there. Try not to put too, too much pressure as you're trying to outline these and that'll give you a little bit 
um, smoother line. But mostly the flowers are going to cover this part of the water can. So you don't even have to worry about it too much. Just, just get it there so you have a reference point. I'm kind of a messy painter. I like to just get most of it on the canvas and then come back at the end and get all my highlights in. So I'll keep this back side of the water can a little bit darker to create the illusion of it going around. And we'll put all of our highlights towards the front. So at this point, I'm going to switch over to the filbert and um, fill in the water can with a, a little bit bigger brush. I'm going to go from left to right, so it just kind of stays in that motion of, of the roundness of the can. picking up some of that black from the outline and pulling it around. If you pick up a little too much black, you can always dilute it with some of the white. Kind of looks more galvanized, but it's not quite so dark. Get all your shading done in there. Don't be afraid to really use that paint because I like it to cover the canvas so you don't see like all the little canvas dots. And I didn't pre-gesso this canvas. I'm just using it straight out of the packet from the craft store. But I do like to make sure it doesn't look like there's not enough paint on the canvas. Kind of like that heavy painted look. From there, I'm going to give myself this little tabletop surface line to establish. Be kind of 
messy with it. Um, I do like to paint the sides of the canvas, so be sure to go around the edge. That way if you're hanging this without a frame through the seasons, um, it just looks more finished. When you watch this video, please check in and like it and let me know where you're painting from. If you're here in California or Sutter Creek or one of the other places I live, we've been in Arizona, I grew up in St. Louis and lived in a few other places. So let me know if you're from one of the places that I've lived or, or how you found us. really fun for me to do something like this and um, in our current situation here in the world uh, definitely pushing us all out of our comfort zone and trying new things and coming up with new creative ideas on how to keep our community together and just, just kind of help one another out so like I said I'm going to really try my best to get a uh, different project posted every week and but you know the, the video and the tutorial will be free and um, if you want to want to improvise with whatever you have around the house that's great if you want to um, find my um, Amazon link and, and order the supplies from from my Amazon affiliate account account and um, that would be great too but whatever works for you and you know gives you something to, to look forward to doing. This is just a real fun, easy, easy, entry-level project. Um, I find it to be pretty relaxing. You can start picking up some of the other colors and just lightly introducing them into your your tabletop surface this is definitely an abstract floral there's really no wrong or right you can add whatever colors you want to this whatever works for your home decor When we start in with the flowers, um, we can come back in and add more uh, details, more shadowing, whatever makes it good for you. Fill this background in. country music going in the background that's usually my go-to there we go so that's all filled in
out of the water can. So I'm going to bring that back in. So this is kind of where I'm at at this point. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start on my big leaves twist this canvas around just a little so I can get the right angle. Um, so there are one, two, three, four, five, and then the leaf down here leaves. And I'm going to put those in first. That way um, when we put the flowers in, they're going to fall to the background. Um, so the leaves are almost like kind of heart shaped or maybe little bunny rabbit ears. Um, you can make them however, whatever leaf shape you're comfortable with. Mine always turn out different. Okay, so this one down here just kind of fell from the can and the flower arrangement. It's going to go here. You can always kind of change this up as you go. Your design, your leaf design. As you fill it in, it'll totally take a different shape. And we've got another one that's just going to come out over this spout. Just kind of loosely put them in. This one, the top. One over here. Definitely have like a better side to my, my flowing of my curves. This side I don't love, but you can also rotate your canvas. Sometimes that helps if you find that you have a, a better side at painting. Always flip it around. That helps. One, two, three, four, five, and then one down here. I use the liner brush to make those little leaf outlines. And then I'll come back in with my filbert and um, fill in with the green. And I am using this 
called Hauser Green. That's a pretty good one. Um, you can add a little bit of blue to it or a little bit of the white to um, lighten it up or darken it up. Don't be too hung up on, on the shape or the shadowing right now. All of those details will come in at the end. You can even come back tomorrow and finish up. Once your paint dries a little, it always looks much prettier to layer on, on a dry paint. I am pretty heavy handed with that paint. I like to really load my brush up. okay if you go out of the lines. As you keep painting and practicing, um, you will begin to find a brush stroke that you like or a style or a technique that is appealing to you. And then without even knowing it, you kind of start having um, like muscle memory on what it was that you did to create that, that look that you like. And you, the next time you paint, you're, you're going to automatically just be able to complete that, that look without even knowing. It's pretty cool how, how it works. Like your mind will just take you back to that brush stroke that you learned previously, but you know, you do got to keep up with it like anything else. Practice makes perfect. Um, I have painted this painting one, two, three, four, like five times now. So each time, you know, I pick up a new little technique or decide to add a little bit different color on it. Um, so um, don't expect your painting to look like mine. Just make it look like yours, your style, your, your technique that you like. It's all just a learning process. And since we all have a little bit of extra time to do some different things, why not try it? So now I got the basic in on those leaves. We'll start in with the big um, poofs on the flowers, on the hydrangeas. And you're totally welcome to be creative and maybe put some sunflowers in or some hollyhocks or whatever flower is your favorite. I like these um, hydrangeas just because they're so easy and they make a really pretty big impact. And if you can get them to grow in your yard, boy, they sure do bloom beautifully. I have lilacs in my yard, not hydrangeas. So maybe next we'll do a lilac painting. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up this round brush. Do you see it? Do you like the makeup girls? This is the round, this brush. And I am going to put in uh, one, two, three, four, five big poofs. And I'm gonna use each one of the colors on my palette here. So I'm gonna have um, a periwinkle circle, a dark blue circle. So that'd be one, two, three, four. Um, so dark blue, lilac, and, and dark purple. And then I'm gonna pick my favorite out of those and double it up to have the five. Now I'll start this top left corner with the dark purple. And it's just a big circle. It's 
kind of is going to establish the size of your hydrangea back there. Okay, so from there, I just rinse my brush a little. I'm gonna pick up this lilac. I think I'll put the lilac up here. We definitely want them to overlap. So we've got two we've got dark purple lilac and I'm just going to go around and I'm going to pick up some of the dark blue. And the next one I'm going to use is this uh, periwinkle. And that's going to be right here, front and center. There's a little too much water going. take this dark purple and I'm just going to repeat it down here maybe tuck it in in the background just a touch hydrangeas always have those really pretty variegated leaves they come in pinks and purples and greens and blues and um, you can pick whatever paint color you'd like to represent. When your paint starts blending it's almost really more natural than you would think. Okay. 
clean up that little mess I made there. So up here, it might make this one just a little bit bigger. You could even add another flower in there just to pick up that space if you'd like. Or you can just leave it with a negative space because that's always pretty. So when we start filling in the, um, the leaves, the petals, when we start filling in the petals on these flowers, um, it's really simple. I just use the round brush and we make like a little five star flower petal. So um, you wanna have enough paint on your brush to kind of get around the entire petal um, and then just leave it because eventually they're just gonna start overlapping. Um, so. Kind of let this background dry. Let the background dry just a touch before you start coming in. Um, I'm gonna use alternating colors on each color poof. So like maybe you can go um, the opposite of what's across. So on the this periwinkle color, I'm gonna use the lilac paint to make my petals. So this periwinkle color will fall to the background. And I'm gonna do that alternating on all of those poofs. Um, in itself right now, it's actually looking kind of like a, you know, nicely done artwork. But um, by adding just a few more details, um, you'll really get a little bit more wow, wow factor. I'll show you this one a little bit closer. Not all the petals are perfectly placed. It's just kind of haphazard random. You can just keep filling them in until you're happy with the look. So if you like more purples, then, you know, use more of those color tones. If you want to even add a little bit of oranges, um, you know, you're welcome to do that. Just have fun and experiment. So I did a little tiny demonstration here um, in class the other day on how I do those color, those petals. So I'm gonna show you again here how I've done that. So using the round brush, I'm loading it up pretty heavy. And this, this is the technique that uh, you'll want to use. Okay, I know if I get up closer, you can really see it and it's just overlapping. So it's one, one brush stroke like that, and you're just actually using the shape of the, brush, the brushes and the bristles to make that um, flower come to life. That's three, and then flip the brush over, you'll have more paint on that side. It's four, and then you can kind of rotate your arm around, and that's five. So that's that perfect little flower shape. And then do it again, one, two, three, four, and five. So as you start filling that in, they'll start looking bushier. And then on that background, um, you'll lose track of like exactly what that circle looks like. You don't still wanna see that outline. You wanna start overlapping. You can also pick up just a tiny little bit of white Two, three, four, five. 
see those? So that's gonna make up your hydrangea poof. going to use this lilac onto on the periwinkle. I'm cleaning my brush off that dark purple. Okay, so this is the lilac here and I'm going to start over here. Okay? I'm going to just break that circle the outer edge. Okay, so there's my first little leaf or petal. Just start going around, overlapping. Remember, you can just add a tiny little bit of white to start getting some highlights. Now you'd be surprised how much the husbands really do like painting sometimes, so don't be afraid to ask your husband or your sons to join in. They may grimace at first, but they actually like it. I have a husband and two sons, so I have a little bit of experience with making them do things they don't really want to do. They're always pretty good sports. So if you want to fill in your background a little with just like a single petal, just press down and add it to your poof until it fills in nicely. The boys usually have fun in spite of all of their grimacing. So we'll just keep going around and around until those little poofs are all filled in. Uh, this will be your first poof, and by the end of your um, floral bouquet, you'll be doing pretty good. So it's okay if you don't fill it in completely because that color is showing up from behind. So I'm thinking so I'm gonna on this dark blue here um, I'm going to use uh, this color up here which is the um, no I'm sorry I'm gonna use the periwinkle on the dark blue okay so that's this one here, the periwinkle.
So my little studio here is only about 400 square feet and I'm located in the Sutter Creek Theater building. Um, so when life gets back to normal and you have a chance, you can come up and visit us. We're a pretty um, little quaint gold rush town. We've got lots of different art galleries and clothing boutiques and restaurants and some excellent wine tasting rooms. Um, the theater has uh, weekly live music performances. A great little pizza parlor. So definitely put Sutter Creek on your uh, list of things to do when. Picking up a little tiny bit of white to start getting some highlights in here. building that my studio is in is about a hundred years old. It used to be a, um, it started its life as a barbershop with this really cool hexagon shaped uh, tile flooring. Easy to sweep up, I guess. Got a neat brick wall. been in this spot for about almost 10 years. I just love all the historic charm. If you can see that. Okay, so up here on this lilac, I'm gonna use the dark purple as my petal color. And, you know, if I pick up a little tiny bit of white, it'll show more of that variegated uh, leaf design as I push through. So make sure you break that little circle with the petal shape.
So don't worry if your star flowers are not perfect. You can always come back in and give it some more color, some more highlights. Once we put centers in, in all of these, they really seem to come together. But you do want to make sure they overlap. Kind of push and pull that paint. You can just put a random petal in. They don't all have to be perfect. But you do want to start with that brush shape from the outside, bringing it in. just kind of alternate my brush stroke. If it starts getting too blotchy, just pick up some white and give it some more dimension. I kind of feel like maybe my leaves are getting a little too blended. So just change the color that you're adding. See that? So since I used blue up here at the top, I think I'm going to repeat the blue here. And since um, maybe this one, um, I'll repeat this color up here. So you can do whatever color palette you know that you'd like to see more of. So I already got blue on my brush. I'm just going to keep on with it down in this area. You can add more white if you want to change it up a little.
So usually at the end of our workshops, we take pictures of everybody's projects and um, it's always fun to see how different everyone's uh, designs look when we've all been given the same ingredients to work with and uh, supplies. Um, your, your own artistic talent will be so much different than someone sitting right next to you. So um, we'll definitely miss that part of, of the workshop. So please, um, if you do this painting, please post it and show us how, how yours turned out. Down here you can um, add a couple little leaf pout, like it looks like something fell. Maybe something over here in one of the purple colors. Add some of this little color down in here so it looks like it's, it's reflecting on the tabletop surface. Maybe even get a little bit of that into your leaves. So since this is smaller, um, trying to figure out what to do on this one. I think I'll go ahead and go with the this lower color here, this lilac, but I'm gonna add probably just a little bit more white to it to lighten it up. Still got a lot of blue in my my brush, so I'm gonna clean that out. Get back to the lilac. Hopefully some of my family's um, tuning in tonight. I know I've got some artistic little girls in my life. Hopefully McKenna and Savannah can paint with me and Peyton and Tyson. Auntie Christina, Melissa. I think just one of the most important things that I can share with you on this is to make sure it all overlaps. Don't, don't over blend it though. So you just want to dab that color on there. 
but when you're loading your brush, you're just dipping in both colors. You're not necessarily blending them. So like I'm gonna dip into this um, really light color here, the periwinkle, and then I'm gonna pick up some white. But I'm not necessarily blending it. I'm just pushing it out on my brush so that the blending is done more on the canvas. And as those background colors start drying, you you can come back in with your um, white and your highlighting, and it will it will not um, blend as much, and you'll start getting that layered effect. So we are almost done. I hope this has been fun and relaxing for you. Definitely go at your own pace. Now that my background's um, dry, I'd like to go back in and add just a few more highlights. And then same with my tabletop surface. Add in a few more shadows. Down towards the bottom, some black. These colors can just be whatever you'd like them to be, whatever works for your, your home decor or wherever you're gonna place this, something that makes you happy. Put it in your office when you get back to work. You can even pick up this um, chip brush. Your bigger blending brush. Come back in and Smooth out the lines. This is definitely the kind of project that you can do over the next few days. You know, just get a good start and um, when you have chance, just pick up where you left off. You can put this um, palette, your color palette, in a Ziploc baggie and um, you know you can leave it on your desk or even put it in your fridge and it'll keep for a few days so you don't have to you know re-pour all your paint. So I want to come back in with some of this buttercream and white and just kind of start highlighting some of my um, green leaves. I'm pretty messy when it comes to my highlighting. Just kind of go with what I think looks good and if it doesn't look good, then I can pick up some more green, add to that. But I just like that real kind of abstract, messy, painted look. I think the more paint you get on those leaves, the more dimension you'll get. It does not have to be exactly like a leaf. It's just. Just a hint, leave something to the imagination. So right now I'm waiting for these um, petals to dry because we're gonna come back in and we're gonna use the back end of the brush. We're gonna dip it in the paint and then we'll come back through and give it the centers of the, of the little flowers kind of like I did here. I'm going to use white, but you can use yellow or alternating colors on each uh, flower puff that you have. See, this table here, this tabletop surface got pretty dark, um, lots of drama. So feel free to add as much color as you'd like to this. I painted this one on a different day and it's much lighter. So every time I've done this, they've all changed. And then there's this one. So 
If you have any questions, you can email me, you can uh, text me, or you can respond on this uh, Facebook post, and I will try to go through and um, pick up any questions that you have and try to answer them. kind of going around and hitting all the little spots that to me look like they don't have enough paint. But essentially, I am almost done until um, I get those little dots in. So I'm gonna use the round brush, the, the tip of the round brush is a little bit bigger than my liner brush, so I feel like um, the back dots will show up more. So, just like that. You get about three dots per dip. Try to put the dots anywhere you had an intersecting uh, petal, right in the center. Sometimes you have to clean the back of the brush off because it starts getting a little heavy on the paint. And then start over. Even put some of these little dots on your leaves, make it kind of look like pollen. See all that? flowers, get a little closer.
this point, you can come back in and darken up your background if you'd like. Just have fun with it. So, um, and always be sure to sign your artwork. I usually sign mine with a little heart in the bottom right corner. Whatever works for you. Use the dark purple. And when I make my hearts, they're pretty cute. They're just little brush strokes, so it's not even a full heart. Just two little brush strokes. All right, well, thank you. Um, again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave me a message. And um, hopefully you'll check back in with me next week. And we'll do this Thursday at seven o'clock again. And if I come up with something else in between then, you'll probably see me. So take care all, bye, stay safe.